Hi guys, what's up? Y'all looking lovely today. You feeling good? No? Yes? Maybe? <laughs> um, so today we have Dad Steve Rogers, ex-mom listener. I would also like to thank the people who commented on my video. Because I was like, how is Sharon still here? Because I thought she was, um, I thought she was Peggy's granddaughter. Uh, so I was like, she can't exist. Turns out she's Peggy's great niece, grand niece. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. She's fine. <laughs> and there was also some theories about Steve going back in time to be with Nat, which I totally was like, oh, you know, yeah, that could happen. I didn't even think about that because I, I think they showed a scene with him. Well, actually, there's no reason why he couldn't still be with Peggy and help Nat. I don't know. It, it you know so many things could happen <laughs> i think that's what marvel likes to do they're like we're gonna make you think and theorize about this and we ain't gonna say nothing we're gonna drop hints some hints won't even make sense you know it's just that's what's gonna happen and you're like all right <laughs> uh but today's fan fiction is dad steve rogers ex-mom listener and you guys have a little baby well not a little baby she's like five i think in the story and she's like i love babies <laughs> Especially in fan fictions, I love the dad love interests though, because they're so sweet and they care for the babies. And the babies, oh, sorry, and the babies are always so cute and nice and ah, you know. I have a um a Tom, <laughs> um a, a mafia Tom Holland ex mob listener coming up soon, guys. So that's also gonna be really good. But today, today it's all about Steve Rogers. This is also an Easter video. I'm just posting this really early for next Easter, guys. I'm not late. What? No, never. <laughs> um, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this fan fiction. Make sure to go support the author because we love authors in this community. And the link to this fan fiction is linked in the description. <laughs> wow, I can never get through that line without messing up. The link to this fan fiction is in the description below, as well as the music. And if there is any sound effects in the video, then the sound effects are also down there. Okay. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you at the end. Bye! Daddy, where are your bunny ears? Sarah asked, tiny hands on her hips and looking just like her father. You chuckled but quickly dipped your head when Steve looked your way, glaring playfully. I can't seem to find them, baby. Can you help me? He asked her, kneeling and straightening her bunny ears headband. Sure, Daddy, of course. You can't go hunting for eggs without them. She explains all business. I'll be right back. Steve watches her skip off and turns to you. What's so funny, Mrs. Rogers? He takes two long strides and cages you against the counter. It's the hands on the hips. I can't with the two of you. Your fingers dance over his chest before combing through his beard. So cute. Me or our daughter? He coos, raising a brow. Definitely Sarah. You tease, brushing your lips to his. Steve's warm lips press to yours, and just as they part, Sarah comes charging back in. Daddy, I found him! They were hung up with your other hats, duh! She sasses. Put them on! Steve nibbles your bottom lip before pulling away and taking the headband. He puts it on, adjusting it until it's comfortable, and asks Sarah, Well, how do I look? Perfect, Daddy! And you too, Mommy! Can we go now? Steve sweeps her up into his arms and reaches out for your hand. Let's go. I want to win this thing. By the time you reach Tony's, the cabin is decked out in pastel decorations and the Easter Bunny is waiting to greet everyone. Sarah nearly bursts with excitement as Steve unhooks her from her car seat. Can we go say hi, Daddy, please? She's hopping up and down while tugging on his shirt. Of course, baby. He takes her hand and they run over. Sarah smiles up at the Easter Bunny and starts asking him all sorts of questions. Steve knows who's in there and he does his best to keep his laughter at bay. 
Tony gets everyone's attention, announcing that it's almost time for the Easter egg hunt, and explains that whoever finds the most eggs wins, and that there's a special golden egg with an extra special surprise in it. You and Steve hold hands and follow Sarah as she dashes this way and that, hunting for eggs. The rest of the team and their families are doing the same. Lots of cheering going on anytime someone finds one. Sarah already has half a basket full when she turns to Steve and says, Daddy, we have to find the golden egg! Her tiny body is taunt with a determination and she's a spitting image of Steve once again, ready to take on the world. There it is again, you mumbled with a pout. Steve's eyes lift to yours, a slow smile spreading over his features. What can I say? She takes after her daddy. You smack Steve in the chest and start to walk away, but he grabs your wrists, gently tugging you into his chest. Sarah is only a few feet ahead of you, slowly and carefully searching for a golden egg. Jealous? He asked in a whisper. You wish, Steve Rogers, you sass. And anyway, I'm glad she's like you. You finish much softer. He leans down for a kiss, letting his hand smooth down your arms and settle on your waist. He whispers, I love you, against your lips, deepening the kiss just as Sarah screams, I found it! You and Steve quickly part and run towards where she's standing next to the back wall of the house, smiling brightly when you see her holding up a large golden egg. I found it! I found it! She squeals, jumping up and down. It was just here, on the ground? You ask, surveying the most empty space behind the house. Sarah shakes her head with a mischievous smile. No way, mommy! It was hidden in a super secret place! You eye her warily and open your mouth to ask more questions, but she holds up a chubby finger. I can't tell you, mommy. It's mine and Uncle Tony's secret. With that, she rushes off to find Tony, yelling the whole way, I found the egg! I want to know about the secret spot. Steve rumbles as you two follow Sarah. Uncle Tony! Look! I got it! I found the golden egg! Sarah shouts. Tony holds his arms open and she rushes into them, holding the egg up triumphantly. Want to see what's inside? Tony asks, eyeing you and Steve. Sarah nods her head frantically as she watches Tony crack the egg open, revealing a folded piece of paper. Her little mouth curls in displeasure. Paper? But that's no fun! Why isn't there a new toy or stuffed bunny or chocolate or... 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 She goes on clearly upset. Tony walks over to you and Steve and hands you the paper, smiling softly before saying, Add it to her college fund and I'll match it to any charity of your choice. With that he walks away, telling Sarah that he has more surprises inside for her and the other kids. Her loud holler of happiness momentarily distracts you, and Steve grabs the paper, his low, holy shit, pulling your attention right back. What, Steve? You ask, eyes wide. He holds up a check with far too many zeros. We can't accept this. You stare at it, nodding your head in agreement. Oh yes you can, and you will, Tony declares, throwing his arms around your waist. Sarah found it fair and square. Anyway. I'm expecting her to go somewhere very expensive like Harvard or Yale. Maybe MIT. He continues rattling off a list of schools as he leads you both back towards the house. Mommy! Daddy! Look at all the amazing stuff that's in my Easter basket! Sarah runs out with a basket nearly as big as her as she smiles up at Tony. Thank you, Uncle Tony! This is the best! She chirps, plopping herself down to play. Tony claps Steve on the back and saunters off to make sure the other kids and Morgan are happy with their surprises. I can't even imagine her being old enough to go to college, Steve whispers, staring down at Sarah with a gentle look. I can't even believe she's almost six. You squeeze his hand and he brings your knuckles up to his lips, tickling the soft skin with his beard. Maybe it's time for number two then, you simper, wrapping your arms around his middle. We can start practicing right now. I can take you out back behind the big oak tree. I don't think anyone would miss us. He answers, brushing his nose to yours. You start to laugh and Steve furrows his brows. What now? You point behind him at the large white bunny headed your way. Steve turns around and rolls his eyes, hands on his hips. You really know how to break up a moment, Buck. He says through gritted teeth. 
The Bucky Bunny punches Steve hard. Sorry, pal. I need some help setting up the bouncy castle Tony got. The thing is huge. Steve's lips meet the shell of your ear. I'm going to get you to myself some point today, whatever it takes. Bucky the Bunny. <laughs> oh my god. The Bucky Bunny. <laughs> I couldn't say that line seriously. I think you could even hear me laughing a bit. Oh, could you just imagine Bucky Barnes dressed up as the Easter Bunny for a bunch of kids? <laughs> oh no! He would be so cranky. <laughs> okay, okay, Whew. okay. Asha, that was the highlight of my week. I got to, like, Photoshop bunny ears onto Steve Rogers' head. <laughs> I love this fanfiction. This is great. I like this. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you didn't like it, then just, mm, just thank you for sticking this long into the video. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, that's all I got, guys. <laughs> I hope you have a nice day, night, or whenever you're watching this, and, uh, bye!